Now, this is an interesting topic that stress can actually activate mostly viruses, but some bacteria and induce an infection. Okay, so we have TB, which is triggered by stress, herpes simplex, like in a cold sore, which is very common. In fact, I think, if I'm not mistaken, 90% of the population has that virus. Shingles, which comes out during stress, which is caused by a virus. It hangs out in a dormant stage and it's activated when you go through stress. H. pylori, which can trigger an ulcer. This is why when you go through stress, sometimes a stress can cause an ulcer. And then the common cold. In fact, there's an interesting study, which I'll put down below, that is the activation of a cold and the severity is directly related to the proportion of stress that a person can go through. Now, not everyone who gets stressed gets the cold, but it's very common that you get stressed and then you get the cold, which mostly comes from a rhinovirus, which affects the upper respiratory system and even move to the lower respiratory system. Then you have HIV, which is not caused by stress, but it can actually trigger HIV going into AIDS, which is a condition where you have no more immune system. So you get all sorts of complications. Now, just from an observation standpoint, being in a practice for 30 years, I'm gonna to venture to say that nearly 100% of the time, when you ask someone, when did you start noticing this infection? It was nearly always right after a stress event, which is interesting. So stress tends to lower your resistance. It makes you more susceptible to pulling in an infection. So you have acute stress and you have chronic stress. Acute stress affects the innate part of the immune system. That's the immune system that you're born with that pretty much is kind of like a more of a general immune system. Then you have a more specific immune system that targets certain pathogens. That's called the acquired immune system. And that's something you develop by being exposed and developing antibodies and adapting to your environment. So chronic stress suppresses the acquired immune system more than anything. So when you go through stress, you activate cortisol and cortisol is the stress hormone that suppresses the white blood cells. So this explains why when you're under stress, you don't have that barrier as much anymore. So you actually have a lowered immune system. You're more susceptible to pulling in pathogens, you have decreased amount of antibodies, and you're more susceptible to getting food allergies. Stress actually alters the gut barrier, which allows pathogens to invade and then create an immune reaction and then create allergies. And this also explains autoimmune um, disorders, which I've talked about in other videos, being triggered by losses, which hands down is the biggest stress that someone can go through. Probably the second biggest stress is people stress, certain personalities that you're in a relationship with that you can't seem to get out of relationship with. That's, that's, that can be very bad for your immune system and also in just the susceptibility of getting uh, infections. So if you haven't seen my recent video on stress, it's a great technique to really relax your body through life and try to, try to keep your body as stress-free as possible. I'll put a link down below. Before you go real quick, I have a course entitled How to Bulletproof Your Immune System. It's a free course. I want you to take it. And here's why. Here's you. Here is your environment. Everyone is focused on this over here, avoiding your environment. But what about here? What about strengthening your immune system? That's what's missing. This course will show you how to bulletproof yourself. And so you can tolerate and resist your environment much better by strengthening your own immune system. I put a link down in the description right down below. Check it out and get signed up today. Hey, before